Ladies and gentlemen, or welcome to episode 8 of my FC25 Bradford City career mode. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, make sure to drop a like on there for me and subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. Can we try and hit 30 likes on today's video? That would be massively appreciated. And don't forget to get your thoughts in down in the comment section down below. Now today we are back for three more matches as we approach Newport County at home. Third versus 24th. We finally got back to winning ways right at the end of last episode. So make sure to go check that one out if you haven't already, as you can see though, we are going to sat third up in the table. I'm just trying to navigate which way around is. And obviously Newport are sat rock bottom of the table. They're only one point away from safety, but they've only won one match all season. They've conceded 21 goals as well, which is the most in the entire division. In terms of our goal scoring record, there's not been many goals in our games so far. 14 scored, 10 conceded. We're sat third in the table though. So let's get into the first match of today's episode. They are going to play a 5-3-2 formation, so the exact same as to what we are playing. Check the Abate is still unavailable. In terms of the pre-match, we're going to do some more shooting again. We'll do rapid angled shots and kind of just improve all them players. I want to actually check how long he's checked Diabate. I, I, I didn't even realise I'd done that. I want to check Diabate how long he's going to be out for. Is there a way that I can find out how much longer he's got left? I know it was around a two-month injury, but... I want him to be back kind of soon because there were a comment that we got in the last episode saying that we need to check the Abate back and since he got injured that's really where our poor run of form has begun so we'll go into the team management and we will give a start once again to Jack Shepard and we'll put Kieran Kelly in the middle and for this game we're also going to start Alessandra Jatta over Oli Sanderson for this one and you know Anthony Sarsvik as well he can get the start over Alex Patterson in the midfield so a couple of changes for this one Newport at home I'm feeling confident let's get into it Magoma picks up the ball driving forward he finds Alessandra Jatta with the first time strike and there's the first chance of the game the force to save there out of I would assume Newport County goalkeeper Nick Townsend corner ball to come Magoma to take his corners haven't been amazing so far this season ball comes into the box he's in a good area he's flicked on by the Newport player it drops down to Kieron Kelly I think who had all the time in the world to plonk it into the back of the net captain for this game leaving the football club in general January, but he's on the score sheet, I believe, for the first time this season. Not even 10 minutes on the clock. It's come from a Paris Magoma corner. I was just saying about how poor they've been for the large part this season. Flicked on there by the number three of Newport County. It fell to Kieran Kelly, who had all the time in the world. It's on his weaker right foot. Place it into the back of the net. The Newport defender is not even looking at play. Past Nick Townsend before he can really even react as well. Brilliant strike, though, into the back of the net. And an early goal is exactly what we needed. Bradford City won. Newport County nil. There seems to be a little bit of a problem here for Kyle Hudlin. The referee hasn't stopped play, although it looked like Newport had stopped there momentarily. A shot comes in and Newport equalise. That is very, very dodgy. It looked like Newport had stopped. They're maybe going to stop the game for Kyle Hudlin, who's clearly down in a lot of pain. Newport have played on and they've gone through and scored. I mean, it's poor defending really from Jack Shepard. He's too busy tugging on the shirt. It's a good strike, to be fair, past Sam Walker before he can really move. At least we've seen some goals in this game, but conceding at home to bottom of the league, you were basically playing with 10 men at that point, and the play they were missing was their main striker. Is disappointing. Is Kyle Hudlin back up? I mean, it looks like he's done his hamstring, but it looks like he's actually going to continue. 1-1. One, one. What a bizarre goal to concede. Brad Halliday coming forward with the ball on this right-hand side. He gets away from the Newport defender, finds Andy Cook to strike. And what a save that is from Nick Townsend. Big opportunity. 22 minutes on the clock. We are going to have another corner as Kyle Hudlin is now going to be substituted off. That's a bit of a loss for Newport with him obviously being six foot nine and their main out ball going forward. Cotton Baker Richardson is on the pitch, so he's pretty decent in the air as well. Corner ball to come. Magoma sends it into the box. Andy Cooks at the front post. It doesn't quite reach him. Jatta brings the ball down to strike, and it's off the post. Alessana Jatta crashes off the upright, and now Sarsvik finds Owen Bailey. He's going to take a shot on. That one's why. 25 minutes in, we've certainly been the better of the two teams so far. We just need another goal. But Newport are going to look to come forward again. Baker Richardson finds it into Jatta. A little bit of space here to take a shot on and that is a good save from Sam Walker. Defensively we do seem to be a little bit all over the place and that's what I'm saying in regards of we're missing Chet Diabate and then when Kelly goes in January we're definitely going to need to get a centre back in because Byrne and Baldwin have proven so far this season they're clearly not good enough. Corner ball here for Newport towards the front post headed out by Andy Cook. Approaching the half an hour mark still somehow won all there's been a lot of chances for both sides in this game so far. Anthony Sarsvik picks up the ball over on the far side 
side. He goes inside to Alessana Jatta. Beats his man. Squares it. Frandy Cook. And that is a poor pass from Alessana Jatta. Cook does well to win the ball back. Magoma now finds Sarsavik to strike. And once again, it's saved by Nick Townsend. I don't think that shot was really going to trouble him too much. And we've got another corner. Magoma will take the first one on this near side towards the front post. Headed towards goal by, I think, Jack Shepard in the end. And it's saved once again by Nick... Nick... Neil Byrne, what do, what do you think you're doing? Neil... Go sit back down. Stop giving me tactical advice. I'm the manager. Who, who are you talking to? You sat on the bench. What on earth does Neil Byrne think he's doing? Corner ball to come. Magoma sends it into the box. Headed away by Newport. I'm not even bothered about the port corner there. Why on earth does Neil Byrne think he's got the authority to tell me what to do tactically? That is poor from Anthony Sarsvik. And now Baker Richardson is in on goal. Could this be a really costly error from Anthony Sarsvik? Baker Richardson bearing down on goal. And he finds the back of the net. Massive error from Anthony Sarsvig. I chose to start him in this one over Alex Patterson. And he has definitely not repaid me with that. Sarsvig will find himself out of the side for the next couple of matches. He certainly won't be starting. I think he'll find opportunities on off the bench limited as well. Good finish there from Baker Richardson on off the bench. A disappointing goal to concede just before half time. But a big, big error from Anthony Sarsvig. With all the chances that we've had going forward, the amount of open goals and saves the goalkeeper keepers had to make to be going in at half time behind is crazy but it just goes to show we've not been good enough again in both boxes and there is the half time whistle Bradford 1 Newport 2 if we lose at home to bottom of the league my my future as Bradford City manager could certainly be in question. Sarsvik's going to come off though for Alex Patterson. Sanderson is going to come on as well for Alessana Jatta and Neil Byrne is definitely not coming on so Aidan Baldwin can come on for Jack Shepard and we will put Kieran Kelly out onto the left and put Aidan Baldwin in the middle. Let's get into the second half and up that somehow things don't get worse. Newport again coming forward and it's good play here from McLaughlin. He's got in behind our defence. He's going to shoot saved by Sam Walker and he claims it on the second occasion. Newport just seems to get in behind our defence far too easily it's simply not good enough Sanderson picks up the ball here goes down the line into Lewis Richards he looks inside for Alex Patterson big opportunity and he's bent it round the post that was his chance to secure his spot back in the starting 11 he hasn't taken it lack of composure in front of goal 12 yards out or so and he's failed to even hit the target 7 minutes into the second half positive start but again just not clinical enough Newport come forward once again here and number 30 is in on goal he's going to get off a shot and that is a Big left-handed serve from Sam Walker. Lewis Richards will do just about enough to keep that one in play. And while we're here, we might as well schedule our final two subs of the game to come onto the pitch. We actually are going to go to a back four now. We're going to go to... It's probably going to have to be a diamond, I would think, considering we've still got no wingers at the football club. That's probably something that we might look to try and do in January. But we will put... Lewis Richards over to left-back. Callum Johnson and Baldwin as two centre-backs in a back four isn't amazing. We'll put Bailey at the base. Patterson on the right. We'll bring Jamie Walker on in the 10. And we might as well bring Neil... We'll actually bring Neil Byrne on for Lewis Richards. Put him in centre-back and put Callum Johnson over to left-back. A little bit more height and physicality defensively. Change in formation whenever them subs do come onto the pitch. But we need a change in fortune in front of goal. Baker Richardson has certainly had a positive impact in this game since he's come on. He now finds McLaughlin bearing down on goal. He's going to get off a shot and that is a good block from, I believe, Callum Johnson. Defensively in this game, we've been so fragile. We really are missing Chet Diabate. The quicker he's back from injury, the better. Alex Pat Patterson has had a positive impact in this second half. Sanderson's first real touch of the game. It's a ball into the box. It's not in a bad area. We need more of that, to be honest with you. Patterson wins his duel, but again, Newport clear. The subs are still not on the pitch as well. Walker picks up the ball on off the bench. He looks for Andy Cook. Ball through here into Ollie Sanderson's path. And there is the equaliser. Just moments after the subs were made, moments after the change in formation, we are back in this game. I'm glad Sanderson's gone and got the ball rather than going to celebrate. Great ball through, though, from Andy Cook. Sanderson with the first time strike he's not had many goals so far this season really struggled in front of goal but nice to see him on the score sheet once more we'll get another replay of it here brilliant first time through ball from Andy Cook and a great first time strike from the Fulham Loney into near enough the top corner around 20 minutes or so left on the clock can we find a winner now Sanderson picks up the ball finds it into Jamie Walker who strikes 
and that was a big chance for him to find himself back in the starting eleven. How on earth has he missed that? I don't know what some of these players are doing. Sit back down. Ten minutes left on the clock. Jamie Walker should have definitely scored. Hopefully, we're not going to come back to rue all these missed chances. As of right now, though, we certainly are. Not long left on the clock. Can we have one last opportunity? Jamie Walker, ball through to Sanderson, who's surely miles offside. He is clearly offside. That's probably going to be the last chance of this game. We'll see how long he's going to be added on. I would hope for a couple of minutes. Four minutes added on at the end of today's game. That is enough for us to create one last opportunity, but we need to win the ball back, and we need to win it back now. Can Newport go up the other end and maybe win it? Baker Richardson, ball through here, and that could be a penalty kick. Neil Byrne has cleaned out the Newport number seven. Thankfully, the referee hasn't deemed that to be a foul. The fourth official, obviously, is walking across the pitch. Sanderson needs to go forward, he goes inside here to Patterson, Walker now, what late drama this would be, the referee blows the full time whistle, 2-2 two -two draw at home to bottom of the league simply not good enough, I can already see the comments coming again, Drake out, all that sort of stuff, it's a poor way to start the episode, we've still got two games though to hopefully turn things around, Tranmere beat Cheltenham 4-0 away from home, have Tranmere even scored 4 goals in real life all season? Wimbledon away is our next game, I'm pretty sure this isn't a fixture in real life, well, it definitely wasn't the 22nd of October but we did not play AFC Wimbledon away, not really too sure what's going on, they're going to play the 5-3-2 formation as every team it seems to do against us in pre-match training, this time we're going to work on defending, overloaded defending, we need to certainly work on that because it has been pretty poor, in terms of the team selection, I think we will make a couple of changes for this game obviously Diabate is going to need to come out Neil Byrne is going to have to start we're going to get Jamie Walker in for Paris Magoma in that midfield Jatta is going to get the start over Andy Cook in this one we're also going to start Corey Evans as well over Owen Bailey in that midfield Jack Shepard we could probably do with having him at least on the bench Kelly's a little bit tired though Richard's also pretty tired in all honesty maybe we give a chance to Joe Adams on the bench over someone like Paris Magoma just rest him completely because his fitness is down at 89 percent I mean, to be fair, I think I'd rather have the extra fitness percentage than quality because neither Magoma or Sarsvik have been amazing in the last couple of matches. So a few changes there. Let's get into it. Wimbledon away. We need a win because that draw at home to Newport is so, so frustrating. Alessana Jatta picks up the ball here inside the penalty area. He works the room for the shot but can only find the side net. And I think it was Jamie Walker who played the ball through to him. Jatta shifts. He gets the shot off. It's not a million miles away, but I think the keeper would have probably had that one covered. Not a lot has gone on so far in this game. Game as we approach the halfway point of the first half, still nil-nil. Patterson picks up the ball, finds Jatta, whose first touch is negative and it forces to go backwards. Halliday now finds Walker, looks for Halliday again on the overlap. Can he find a Bradford shirt? He's got Jatta and Sanderson waiting for it. Back into Jamie Walker, no doubt he'll pass backwards. Corey Evans now, we've not really seen him be involved too much. He finds Patterson, Sanderson now, first touch out of his feet, second to strike, and there's the real first save of the game, 40 minutes on the clock, neither keeper has had a lot to do, but that was a decent save from the Wimbledon at shot stopper, although the shot was pretty much right at him, it's not been exactly the most entertaining of games so far, as we approach at the half time mark, it's still at 0-0, will Wimbledon be able to break the deadlock before the halfway point, Furlong coming forward, I thought he'd sign for Doncaster, I mean I know transfers happen, but I'm pretty sure he's on loan, at Doncaster, it could be a different furlong to be fair, and that is nearly 1 0 Wimbledon. Max Stevens with the strike, proven goal scorer at this level. Thankfully, it has flashed past the post. We're going to play out from the back, but I assume this will be the last opportunity of the half. Didn't even break into the opposition half, and there is the half time whistle. A draw away from home isn't a bad result, but when you consider that we've just drawn at home to bottom of the league, we do really need to win here. Richards is knackered, so Johnson's going to go over to left back, and Aidan Bolden is going to come on at right centre back, and Andy Cook is also going to enter the pitch for Ollie Sanderson. See if Jatter and Cook, the two big men, Two target men, two physical strikers can have an impact on this one. Andy Cook picks up the ball. He's going to shoot early doors, and that is a good save from Owen Goodman. I believe on loan from Crystal Palace, he's forced a save, which has led to a corner. Walker, ball in, bit of a deeper one, headed away by Wimbledon. They're pretty solid in terms of set pieces. Aidan Baldwin, that is absolutely terrible. Alex Patterson is currently occupying a centre-back role, and Callum Johnson is currently playing as an inverted midfielder. I don't really know what's going on. Wimbledon have tore us apart. They're in on goal. The shot comes comes in, it's 1-0 Wimbledon. How are we still in an automatic promotion race? I think we were fourth going into this game. We might drop down to sixth or seventh. 
but everyone seems to just be terrible. Like, we're bad, but everybody else seems to somehow be worse. I don't know why Patterson stood in centre-back, Johnson stood in midfield, Kelly's at left-back. Again, we have conceded from the Burnham Baldwin side. Them two are terrible, we've just got to get through to January and try and replace them. Although we're actually replacing Kieran Kelly. We need to replace Anthony Sarsvik, although we're actually replacing Jamie Walker. I need to focus more on performances on the pitch rather than just accepting money that we get in for any offer. Because I don't know why I've accepted the Kieran Kelly deal. He's a good player for us. He's our second highest rated centre back. I don't know. I don't really know what I've done with, in terms of selling Kieran Kelly. I think that's a really bad move considering Burn and Baldwin is still going to be here. And actually, with all that talk of transfers and regretting transfers, which technically haven't even officially gone through yet, as that is a through ball looking for Matty Stevens, and that is a good interception from Kieran Kelly. I completely forgot to make any substitutions, so I don't know if they're actually going to come on the pitch at all. They might get the last few minutes or so. We will go through and make our final few changes of the game in a moment. We'll see if this attack leads to anything. Alessandra Jatta coming down the near side we can't really see because of the camera angle he swings a ball in Andy Cook champ I was going to say jumping and challenging and I've ended up going with jumping anyway let's make some substitutions I'm looking at the options on off the bench we are going to go to the diamond formation again it worked quite well for us in the last game so let's hope it can have a positive impact for us in this one where is the diamond formation there we go 4 one 2 and 2 narrow and it does mean that we will Put Baldwin into centre back. We will bring off Kieran Kelly. We'll put Evans at the base. Put Sarsavik in the midfield. Joe Adams is also going to come on for Jamie Walker. And Owen Bailey can come on as well for Corey Evans at the base of the midfield. 20 minutes or so left on the clock. I don't even know if them subs are actually ever go coming on. Oh my god, Aidan Baldwin. That is an absolutely dreadful attempt to try and intercept the ball. Bugle coming forward. He has got a couple of Bradford defenders around him. Furlong now looking to hopefully find a through ball. He's got away from Aidan Baldwin far too easily. Gets a shot off at Walker's near post. Aidan Baldwin has been twisted, turned inside out. The subs have now entered the pitch. Let's hope for the final 50. 15 minutes they can have a positive impact because so far it's not been amazing has it corner comes in cleared away at the front post only as far as Johnson little bit of time from here to pick a pass Lewis now looking to shoot and Halliday should hopefully be able to deal with this one it looks like he's going to get out pretty comfortably Hippolyte coming forward he cuts the ball back here too Matty Stevens gets an early shot off and that is an unorthodox save from Sam Walker I thought the shot was going in at the front post they end up going out towards the back post and he's kind of done one of the throw my arms at it like an octopus and try and save it. He's done it, and Andy Cook heads the resulting corner away. That looks like a foul. Referee! I think Joe Adams has maybe injured him. No, he's faked the injury. He's back up here. If he scores after faking an injury, I won't be happy. Brad Halliday does win the ball back. How long is going to be added on at the end of today's game? Two minutes. Is that enough for us to create one final opportunity? Again, it's not been amazing in terms of results so far in, the, in today's episode. A 2-2 draw at home to Newport. It looks like a 1-0 defeat away at Wimbledon. Unless Joe Adams can rescue a point for us here, which he does in the 93rd minute. Joe Adams on off the bench has had very limited opportunities so far this season. But he has said to me there... Give me the chance, I will take it. Stop playing me at left back, play me in my position and I will win your football matches. Joe Adams will get a start in the final game of the episode. I don't know why I've done a Mourinho down the touchline to celebrate a one-all against AFC Wimbledon. Either way, he's rescued a point. We're not going to start losing football matches again. This will make it three unbeaten in the league with the win at the end of last episode. Two draws in this episode. I'm delighted it's Joe Adams as well because we've got so many players in that midfield that Adams hasn't really had an opportunity because of his over. Overall, he's coming off the bench and grabbed us a last kick of the game equaliser pretty much. Let's get into the final one of today's episode and hope we can finally get a bloody win. I mean, the league is extremely tight. We're sat on 20 points in fifth, but if we win our next game, we could go all the way up to second. If we lose our next game, though, we could drop all the way down to 12th. This league is incredibly tight. Our record isn't amazing. 1-5, drawn 5, lost 3. That's not particularly great, but we are still one point away from second place. MK Dons are running away with it a little bit. They're still yet to lose. Fleet would are also still yet to use, uh, yet to lose, yet to lose, but they've drawn nine of their opening 13 matches. Carlisle at home is the final game of today's episode. They're 19th. Again, they're going to play this formation. They've got five defenders, six defenders actually, because Ben Barkley is also a centre-half naturally. Charlie White leading the line for the opposition. Pre-match training, I don't even know. Let's work on us passing extreme hot potato. Is that just like a rondo? I would assume more youth tournament nonsense. Check the Abate. When are you going to be back available? We're going to start this game with a diamond. Here is the starting 11 then for the final 
final game of today's episode at home to Carlisle. We've got Sam Walker in goal, a back four of Halliday, Johnson, Kelly and Richards. It's not ideal playing Johnson in a back four as a centre-back, but I think he'll just about be able to do the job. He's six foot two at the end of the day. We've got a midfield four of Bailey, Patterson, Magoma and Adams in behind Cook and Sanderson once more. The final game of today's episode, the final opportunity to get back to winning ways, pick up another three points and hopefully go back into those automatic promotion places, back into that top three Carlisle at home oh I'd love it if we beat them Joe Adams picks up the ball a big opportunity for him in this game and he's already creating chances he's looking lively so far Patterson picks it up he's going to shoot from distance he forces a save from Keto so we're not going to be seeing Harry Lewis returns Valley Parade they've got a new goalkeeper in called Keto never heard of the bloke Magoma ball in looking for Andy Cook they've got about five players on him there absolutely sandwiched him as our four or five players all ran to the near post apart from Andy Cook Joe Adams now he goes into Alex Patterson he's got Kieran Kelly in a load of room here can he find him he can twisting and turning his shot on the end is blocked by John Mellish Carlisle come forward here with McGeoch he goes into Ben Williams I believe former Cheltenham and Barnsley man swings a ball into the box Armstrong heads towards goal his header is well wide so they've got Armstrong and White leading the line two big physical strikers Callum Johnson and Kieran Kelly should be able to deal with them both though hopefully Ollie Sanderson picks up the ball on the edge of the box Carlisle clearly employing a low block in this game they've got pretty much everyone stood behind the ball apart from one or two strikers but all five of their defenders are always stood inside the penalty area that's a big chance for Joe Adams and he squandered it approaching the half time mark it's still at 0-0 it's not been an amazing game so far not really many chances for either side but I think it doesn't help that Carlisle are playing so deep and quite narrow that there's not really much space for us to go with in behind and then when we get the ball to feet we're not really good enough to take players on 1v1 unfortunately because you don't really see the AI do that in FC at 25 but I assume we are going to go in at 0-0 for this one unless Carlisle can create something here we are well over the one minute added on but Armstrong's in and that was a horrendous finish he was actually onside there as well goodness me that was shocking do I want to make any changes not really I think we've been pretty good so far so let's just get underway for the second half we don't really look like conceding it's just kind of been a 45 minutes of not really a lot happening Alex Patterson picks up the ball can he create something he finds Paris Magoma Looking for a forward pass into Joe Adams. Can he get off a shot? He does. And he forces the save from Keto. Keto. I'm going to call him Keto. That's what we'll go with. They've made a change quite early on into the second half. McGeoch has come off. Magoma sends the ball into the box. Andy Cook's rising. Cleared away there by, I think, Sam Lavelle. And Joe Adams will keep it nice and tidy to find Lewis Richards. Brad Halliday now. Is he going to look to pass the ball? He's not. He's going to look to go alone. He finds Alex Patterson. He's going to shoot from distance. And again, forces a good save from the Carlisle goalkeeper. And eventually they are able to clear. Good start though from us in this second half. Let's just hope we don't get done on the counter. Magoma picks up the ball. Look how deep this Carlisle United side are playing. Richards now looking to ball roll. Loses it. Let's now schedule some substitutions. 20 minutes left on the clock. But the ball just simply is not going out of play. Shepard is going to come on for Kieran Kelly in the defence. We're also going to put Brad Halliday over to left back and we will bring Jay Ben on at right back. So we've got three right backs on the pitch at the moment. Magoma is going to come off for Sarsavik. Jatta can also come on as well for Andy Cook who hasn't really done much so far in the game and Jamie Walker can come on for Alex Patterson as well in the midfield. We'll keep Joe Adams on and hope that hopefully he can come up with some more magic again. Oli Sanderson picks up the ball here. Can he work the room for a shot? He's going to lay it back into Owen Bailey, who's actually been a pretty solid signing for us so far. Joe Adams picks up the ball here, looks for Oli Sanderson, who is onside. And that is a massive opportunity missed for Oli Sanderson. Brilliant play from Joe Adams, and I cannot believe Sanderson has missed a chance like that. Five minutes left on the clock, somehow still 0-0. Their keepers certainly kept him in this game. Well, there isn't long left to go now in this one. It looks like it is going to finish as a 0-0 draw. Their keepers certainly kept the minute he made some really good saves in this game as Owen Bailey picks up the ball looking to twist and turn but he's gone back to Jack Shepard what on earth are we doing there we had the opportunity to counter attack we didn't take it the fourth official is already steaming on the pitch it's not really the way you want to end the episode it's still unbeaten but is that three draws 2-2 1-1 two, 0-0 two, one, one, nil, nil. it just got progressively worse more can beat Doncaster 3-0 it's just not going great for us so far, is it? We've got an FA Cup match coming up next. I presume that means we can't then see what the league table's looking like, which is frustrating. 
yeah, we can't see what the league table's looking like, but I assume we'll be in and around the playoffs. Thank you all so much though for watching today's episode. If you have enjoyed, make sure to drop a like on there for me and subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. 30 likes on today's episode will be massively appreciated. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. And I'll see you very soon for another one. Peace.